So if you just got done um, watching my basic EKG video, you may, uh, or maybe if you started watching it and said, forget this, um, you know, and came to this, um, just know that as hard as it is to kind of get through that first PowerPoint, it will help you to um, kind of understand a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about. So before we can start talking about abnormal heart rhythms, um, we're going to talk about what does normal look like? Because you always have to know what normal looks like before you can understand what abnormal is. So what is normal? So normal is, you know, what we, or the rhythm that we call this is what's normal sinus rhythm. And it's defined as normal sinus rhythm because it has a few things. One, it has everything that you're supposed to have. It has a P wave, which is this, you know, um, little hill here before the pointy thing. It has QRS complexes which is the pointy thing after the little hill. And it has T waves, which that's the rest period. Um, and again, if none of that makes sense to you, watch the EKG basics and um, it goes over kind of what each of those are. But you can see that it has everything it's supposed to. I have a P wave, a QRS, a T wave, little space. P wave, QRS, a T wave, a little space. P wave, QRS, a T. It's regular, um, you know, it's predictable. It has every part that it's supposed to. I can look at this and say, you know, of course, if the patient has a pulse, I can, you know, succinctly say that it looks from the looks of their EKG, the top of their heart is filling up with blood. Um, it is sending, contracting and sending blood to the bottom of their heart, which is then contracting and sending blood out to the lungs and the rest of the body. And so I can look at this and say that um, based on this, it has everything that it's supposed to. A uh, normal sinus rhythm also has a normal heart rate. So in that other um, horrible PowerPoint about basic EKG stuff, I talked about the SA node. And remember a normal pacemaker in the heart, or if my pacemaker, my heart is working normally, um, it's going to beat somewhere between 60 to 100 beats per minute. And that's going to be my normal pace. So, um, you know, and like I mentioned, it's regular, there's regular distance in between these beats, or in other words, there's regular R to R interval, as we call it. So this is effectively just to kind of sum up, this is normal, because it has all the parts of a normal EKG, the top of my heart is contracting, the bottom of my heart is contracting, my heart is resting and filling up with blood, I have a normal rate, I'm not going too fast, and I'm not going too slow. And my heart rate is normal or predictable. So my heart rate is, you know, like I could count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like, you know, it's predictable with each beat, there's the same distance in between. So this is what normal is. There's also um, sinus bradycardia. So this is still, um, you know, this actually can be normal. Some people, this is just where they live. Um, everything is normal, like we just mentioned. They have everything we're supposed to, we have the top of the heart contracting, the bottom of the heart contracting, the resting period. Um, but the only thing that's a little off about sinus bradycardia is that it's a little slow. So remember we said for a normal sinus rhythm, the heart rate is 60 to 100. For sinus bradycardia, it's less than 60. Um, and um, again, this can be normal. Some people are really in shape and they live in like a low heart rate in the 40s or the 50s. And that's just where they're at. They have, um, their heart has compensated um, for the other, uh, their body has compensated for this. And um, it gets enough cardiac output, even though it's not beating as fast as your heart or my heart may be. Um, and so um, it also can be normal in sleep when we're resting, you know, our heart's not gonna need to beat as fast. It can be a sign of a problem. It can be a sign that your pacemaker, remember when I talked about the problems with the pacemaker, um, you know, um, it can be a sign that there's something not working well there. Um, it can also be a sign of, um, you know, uh, like overdoses of certain medications. It can be a sign of digoxin toxicity. It can be a sign of too much beta blockers um, and, um, or too much certain drugs and things like that. Um, you know, it can also be a sign of that as well. Um, and, you know, if I'm moving too slow, um, you know, again, I really just, I'm going to need to kind of see what is going on with the patient. Sometimes I'm going to need to treat this rhythm and sometimes I'm not, I'm going to check on that patient. Um, there'll be a different PowerPoint kind of related to, um, how we treat these rhythms and what my role is as the nurse, but effectively any, any heart rhythm of patients and even normal sinus rhythm, I need to see how are they feeling? What's their blood pressure? Um, you know, how are they tolerating it? How is their oxygenation? So I'm going to look at all these things for a patient that's in sinus bradycardia. And I'm going to just see, you know, how are they tolerating it? Are they getting enough oxygenation and perfusion to their tissues? Um, 
And, you know, if there's any way that I can reverse it, like if they maybe got too much of a medication, I'm going to try to reverse that if they are experiencing symptoms. Um, there's medications I can give to speed it up. We'll talk about in class about atropine, um, you know, which helps to speed up the heart. Um, there's also uh, medications like um, dopamine that can help to speed up the heart as well. And worse comes to worse, if my pacemaker is failing me, if I have something going on in my heart where my beautiful pacemaker is just not functioning, I can actually have a pacemaker inserted that can help to speed up my heart. And that's going to help to make my heart beat at least so many beats per minute. So I'm getting enough cardiac output. So there's a lot of ways if this is abnormal that we can treat it. The heart can also um, be normal, just like normal sinus rhythm, but a little fast. So, you know, instead of being a little too slow, like in sinus bradycardia, I can be a little too fast. And this is what we call sinus tachycardia. So it's still sinus, so it's like a normal, there's a the top of my heart's contracting, the bottom of my heart's contracting, I'm having a resting period, <clears throat> but I'm moving a little bit faster. And the, the reason that moving a little faster can be a little bit um, more dangerous is because when I'm moving a little bit faster, if I'm having a lot of heartbeats per minute, like how you guys feel like when you get anxiety written and, um, you know, as you're watching this, um, you know, uh, presentation about EKG stuff, um, the problem there is, is that if I'm moving too fast, that I'm not going to have time to fill. Um, and it's all about having enough time, you know, to rest. So we talked about in that really horrible PowerPoint about the basics of EKG, about the fact that during that T wave time, um, it's or that toilet, um, you know, that T wave is going to give us time to rest. That's the time where like, if it was a toilet, it's filling up with water to get ready for the next flush. And it's the same for your heart. Your heart needs time to fill because if I am pumping really, really fast, even if I'm pumping really good, and I'm sitting there and I'm like spitting a bunch of blood or spitting blood out. If I'm not filling with anything, I have nothing to spit out. In other words, if I'm pumping too fast, I have nothing to pump out because I haven't had time to rest to fill up. So it'd be like me trying to continuously flush my toilet over and over and over again. Nothing is, there's nothing to fill because it hasn't had time to fill up to get ready for that next flush. Um, so again, uh, tachycardia can be normal. It's normal in anxiety. It's no normal in stress and um, things like that as well. Um, it also is normal in exercise. So your heart rate naturally goes up when you exercise. <clears throat> but it can also be a sign of a problem. You know, sometimes with anxiety, it can be a sign of a problem. It can mean you need to get treatment or something for that. But I want, when you're thinking of sinus tachycardia, some of the most common reasons that people have a, you know, an elevated heart rate are going to be dehydration. In other words, they need fluid. Um, they may have a fever. So they may need to be, um, they may have infection or something going on and they need their fever treated. Um, they may be in pain and you need to treat their pain. They may not be getting enough oxygen to their tissues for some reason. So that's the way, remember, because if you remember, you know, the, the sympathetic nervous system um, or the heart responds with a faster heart rate when it thinks it doesn't have enough of something or it's not getting enough oxygen. It's all about what are the things that are going to take up more of my body's supply of oxygen or what is going to cause my um, body to have a more demand for oxygen. And all of these things, dehydration, fever, pain, lack of oxygen, all of them are going to cause uh, my body to say, I need more, I need more. And one other thing, if you guys remember um, from the first section is hypoglycemia. So, um, you know, when patients that have a low blood glucose, their uh, blood sugar goes down, um, then their body's fight or flight goes in and saying, hey, I don't have enough sugar. And it starts trying to pump faster to get more glucose out and to kind of, um, you know, pretty much react to that really low blood glucose. Um, so, you know, there's lots of reasons why, um, you know, a patient can have a high heart rate, but these are some of the most common ones. So if I have a patient in this rhythm, first and foremost, I'm going to see what's going on with all these things. Are they hydrated? Do they have a fever? Are they hurting? What's their oxygen levels? What's their blood sugar? All these things. I'm going to check all of these things and try to figure out what are the co possible causes. Now, if I do all of that and all of those are normal, they're not having a problem with that and their heart rate's just fast, I can give medications like beta blockers or calcium channel blockers to slow down that heart rate so that I can get it back to normal a normal rate that is. So it's also important to note, you know, I kind of mentioned some of the things that can cause you to have um, an, uh, a, um, 
slightly abnormal heart rhythm, but we're going to start getting into the next PowerPoint will be over dysrhythmias or abnormal heart rhythms. So what are, th um, what causes things to be abnormal? Um, so what are some things that can cause you to have an abnormal heart rhythm? <clears throat> so things that you want to consider, you know, if you have a patient who's experiencing a dysrhythmia, these are some of the things you might want to ask yourself. Does my patient have this in their history? Or might this be the reason that they have something going on? So if a patient has heart failures, having a heart attack, or has any sort of valve disease, this is just a few. Really, any heart condition can put a patient at risk for an abnormal heart rhythm. So pretty much this is a list of all the reasons you can go into an abnormal rhythm. Acid base imbalances. Anytime that pH is off and um, you have an imbalance of your um, uh, your pH, it can cause you to have a, uh, um, a dysrhythmia because especially if you start to get really acidic, um, you know, a lot of patients that are really acidic start to have very abnormal heart rhythms. Drugs and alcohol um, and caffeine all can, um, you know, can stimulate or, uh, or sedate to the point where you can have abnormal heart rhythms, fluid and electrolyte imbalances too, which, you know, I have later on the list as well. Medication side effects can also cause um, abnormal heart rhythm. So it's always good to kind of know what are those common effects? Is there something I need to look for? Like when we talk about with hypertension that we give furosemide um, sometimes, which is a diuretic, it wastes potassium. So sometimes people are getting treated for hypertension, but they're in up with abnormal heart rhythms because their medication lowers their electrolytes, you know, or lowers their potassium, which can cause abnormal heart rhythms. Um, lack of oxygen. When your heart's not getting enough oxygen, it starts doing funny things and it starts, you know, having kind of some imbalance, uh, some abnormalities in the electrical activity. Um, so, uh, and, it, and also fluid overload, like having too much fluid, like heart failure patients, they're really high risk for getting, um, you know, abnormal heart rhythms. Um, and then infection too, when your body is using a lot of its oxygen to fight infection, and then also possibly with infection, it could be having a, um, uh, what was I going to say? A, uh, it's, um, it could um, irritate and um, some of the inflammatory processes can make that electrical activity off. So infection, even other places in your body can put you more at risk for uh, having an abnormal heart rhythm. Mm -hmm. So this is just a little bit to get started about talking about what's normal and how are we going to treat normal or slightly abnormal rhythms. Um, and then also starting to kind of get used to, uh, get introduced to what are the things I need to be looking for? If my patient is not normal, what, do I, what questions do I need to be asking myself or what do I need to be looking for in their history? So um, I hope this was helpful and looking forward to seeing you for the next one.